Hi everyone, my name is Mac. I'm a back-end software engineer with Turo in San Francisco, and I'd like to talk to you today about how I integrate Emacs with REST client and org mode into my daily workflow for documenting and testing APIs. All of the materials for this talk can be found in my Emacs Conf 2019 repo with the URL here. This example uses restclient.el, which is a domain-specific language for working with RESTful APIs, and OB REST Client to provide the wrappers for org mode. However, these are just what I use. Uh, the principles I demo here can work with any set of programming languages that's supported by org mode and has network calls. So I find this way of writing documentation great because it helps people get into using Emacs and provides a shallow learning curve um, without being overwhelming of how to use Emacs. Uh, the second thing that's great about it is that it helps support maintenance of documentation because the documentation itself is actually used to interact with APIs. Therefore, it's providing utility to developers and they can use it and maintain it all at the same time. Um, as an added benefit, you have full org mode support for task management, uh, doing things like exporting to other formats, building scripts via tangling, as well as writing very complex API interactions by feeding the output from one API into the input of another API. Um, I tend to favor using ELISP for simple things like building requests, uh, login strings, things like that, as you'll see. Uh, I do try to avoid using languages or tooling that aren't integrated with Emacs. However, if it makes my life easier, I'll use ubiquitous tools like curl and jq as needed. Um, I've included a mock server that I already have running here, um, and you can find details about how to get that set up uh, if you're interested in the repo and link up above. So let's jump right in. Uh, here I provided a sample document for a stock trading application. We've got some various environments here, which are localhost, development, staging, production, um, and I've also included an API version. Uh, for header args here, these are shared by every code block that's nested under this header. Um, for here, this is uh, header arguments that are applied to all ELISP code blocks under this stock trading application header. So first, let's jump into some generic functionality. I tend to organize things in the typical uh, org mode outline style, where each header is a slash separated path. Basically this provides a really clean uh, document and organizes your API in the same way that the path is laid out. One other thing to mention is that I recommend disabling confirm evaluate while you're working on these blocks because otherwise you'll have to respond yes many times to execute a request and it just gets kind of annoying. So this is a top level block that we use to build uh, API requests. Um, basically, this is the root URL and points to whatever uh, environment we're looking at. Changing this changes it for all code blocks in this document and provides a really clean way to switch environments without making too much code change. So let's first look at how we authenticate with our application. Um, this is using curl and jq to provide an example of how it's very easy to add languages to this document besides REST client and ELISP. Uh, so if we execute this block, we can see that we've disabled, or we've set results as silent, and the results just display in the mini buffer in the bottom left, where you see A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, this is just so that we don't clutter up our document with uh, output that we don't actually care about, um, and just helps keep changes smaller and clean. Um, if you look here, this is a utilities. Uh, heading that I typically define things that aren't related to the API but are useful in relation to interacting with it. You can also tag it with a no export tag um, and basically what that does is if you export this document to an alternate format it won't show up in that alternate format and allows you to hide things like uh, testing users, testing passwords, that sort of thing from where the documentation gets distributed. So let's take a quick look at the API itself here, now that we've logged in. Um, basically, I'll define a, another header argument for REST client called URL with the result of this get API URL function. Uh, if we execute it, you can see that it basically uses the root we specified before, which is localhost 3000 and the API version. So basically what that does is it allows us to share this URL variable amongst all the REST client code blocks under the API heading. 
So let's jump in to uh, how to buy a stock here. You execute a code block by hitting Control C, Control C. You can see that we've now got an order status of executed. And yeah, so now we've purchased that stock. So moving down, same thing to sell a stock. Um, you can see that we're sharing the OAuth token and the URL from header arguments. So let's look quickly at how we implement a code block like this. It's very simple because we've already defined all these header arguments. We can just basically define the code block and we're good to go. So we'll just call org babel demarcate block, select a rest client block, issue a get request to URL stocks quote, and let's get the quote for Apple. Let's grab our authorization token here. And now that we have the code for an authenticated request, let's execute it by hitting Control C, Control C. And you can see that the current stock price of Apple is 72. Um, this obviously isn't real. Uh, I just mocked it out very quickly. Um, so yeah, this is the basics of how I work with APIs, document them, test them at Turo. Um, and I hope that you've all found this useful. Thanks.